Welcome to Made in Mari, the podcast that focuses on the successes and struggles of local businesses. Let's get started. My name's G, I'm your host, and today I have the pleasure of time with Claire Humphreys. She is a mindset coach and Proctor Gallagher consultant. She is also the owner of Will to Win, which is a personal and professional development consultancy. Good morning. Good morning, Graham, and good morning, everyone. Absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you. Super. So where are you, where are you based at the moment? Where's, where's home for you? Well, home for me, Graham. I'm based in Kingusi here in the super. Highlands. Ah, super cool. Nice, nice place to be. Very beautiful up there, I believe. Very beautiful. Very, very blessed with the beautiful surroundings and people. And yeah, just to be with nature is a phenomenal thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best, the best of all worlds. So let's dive into this mindset and consultancy work. So where did it all originate for you? I guess it originated uh, in my mind. It originated as an idea. My background, I've worked in HR leadership development for the last 15 years, Graham, mm -hmm. and always had a passion and an interest in personal development. And I believe whatever you're seeking is seeking you. And I came to a point of whereby I had a lot of questions that needed answering, questions that I was, uh, I was asking myself about what is the meaning to my being, what is it I'm here to do, and I wanted to be able to help people on a deeper basis. So I was familiar with the greats, such as Michael Beckwith, uh, Lisa Nichols, Jack Canfield, uh, Tony Robbins. And it wasn't really until I came across Bob Proctor that everything started to really click into place. And then my curiosity, I suppose, got the better of me. Um, I often describe... I had the secret love affair with Bob Proctor on YouTube. <laughs> I was following for a while of, of things back in the 80s. You know, Bob has been around for that many years. And I got to the stage of whereby that curiosity again developed. Mm -hmm. And I contacted the Proctor Gallagher Institute and I made a great decision. I made that decision to invest in me and to be coached and mentored by the best. And from that, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to go on and help other people just like me or business owners, entrepreneurs to really get an understanding of who they are and what it is they want to achieve in their personal and professional life. So it started with an idea. And I believe if you can hold it in your mind, you can certainly hold it in your hand. And that's when I started my business, Will to Win. Wow. Wow. So you really took on the, uh, the, the concept that, that thoughts become things, right? You, you had this idea in your head and you turned it into something tangible in, in the real world. What was it like to make that, that, that shift, that jump from, from HR into helping people sort of make their visions become reality? I think it, would, it was a natural kind of progression. It, certainly in the last role that I had, I became fascinated about people, uh, what made them tick, why they did the things they did, why some people were able to excel, some people were staying as they are. And, and so for me, it was a natural kind of progression in really understanding what holds us back and really understanding how we can move ourselves forward. So to be able to help people on this deeper level, to start to kind of strip everything back, I suppose, Graham, and to really look at the essence of, of, of who we are, why we do the things that we do. So for me, it, it was such an easy progression. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that my background in leadership development and learning and development certainly helped that shift and that progression a lot quicker than perhaps uh, others. So where does a person begin in their journey of change or transformation? Let's say somebody has sort of a feeling that maybe something's not, not right. Well, what should they do next? I think 
it's a real good question. And I think the first stage is that we need to recognize where we are. A lot of people have goals and dreams and aspirations, and they think that that's what they need to focus on. Yes, that is true, but we need to know where we are first. So by recognizing where we are, that would be the first step. And then from that, it's about then thinking, just as you said, thoughts become things. What is it I do want? What do I want my life to look like? What legacy do I want to leave? What is it I want to create for me, my family, for my business, for my team members? So really the first step is actually acknowledging where you are. And from that, I think there's a, a great sort of foundation then to build on because we all get stuck. We're, we're all, we all have been stuck somewhere in our lives of whereby we don't know where to turn. But I think acknowledging where you are firstly is the first step. Oh, absolutely. Well, understanding where you are within your mindset and maybe also where you are within your environment or your job or within your friend groups and your family and, and the people around about you. And then I would imagine that you need to know where you want to go as well, where you want, where you want to get to. And then I suppose make some kind of plan with that or, or how does it, how, how do you, how do you, how do you move? What's the next thing? It's all about decision. Mm. So when I look back, my sort of personal story, when I look back, probably around about sort of six or seven years ago, Graham, I wanted to start my own business then. But I guess what happened is I got in the way of me. Mm. The, the, the fear, the worry, the doubt, even though I had a successful uh, grounding and I've worked for many big corporate companies, that sort of doubt of what do I know about starting my own business? What do I know about marketing or accountancy? You know, what do I know? And so for me, being in that place at that time, through the understanding and development of myself and my mindset, when I made that decision to start my own business, I was coming from a place of understanding. It was different. I had to let go of the how, because there are times of whereby when we are coming out of our comfort zone, when we're stretching ourselves, we're not going to know the how because otherwise we will, you know, we would have already done it. So it's about making that decision first. Make a decision, not based on where you are, but what it is you want. What, what is it I want to achieve? What goals do I have? What are the next 12 months, the next five years, the next 10 years? What, what, how do I want them to be? So you'll make that decision firstly. This is what I want. This is what I want in all areas. And from that, again, that builds on the next sort of foundation, really, of knowing where you are and then where is it I want to go. And making that committed decision, I am going to do this. Absolutely. There must be quite a lot of people who are, I would say, living other people's lives and other people's dreams out there. And there's nothing wrong with contributing to a greater good in that way, but it's also important not to forget about ourselves in the process. And I imagine there might as well be when, when you talk about not worrying about the how, that sometimes people are overthinking things as well. Totally. And I certainly, from my own experience, that's exactly what I was doing. But it's about, I think when you make a committed decision, you know, you, you automatically flip yourself on a different frequency. You're, you're thinking then, you're opening your mind up then to possibilities. You're opening up your mind to ideas and, and the, create, you know, the, the creativity that we have, the use of our imagination. We've been blessed with an intellect. We have this imagination of whereby we're able to create, we're creative beings. So I totally agree, Graham. You know, a lot of people are just kind of going through the motions of life or they're living out other people's dreams. There was a, there was a great quote that um, Bob actually sort of shares and he, um, he got this really from one of his mentors. If I want to be free, I've got to be me. Not the me that you want me to be, 
not for me that my family or my friends or my kids want me to be. If I truly want to be free, I got to be me. So I better know who me is. Wow. Wow. That's a great way to, to, to look at life. In a recent presentation at the uh, Reasons and Results Summit, if I can reflect back on that for, for a second, you talked about the idea that we are programmed to fail. Can, can you talk a little bit more about, about that idea and how we can sort of step beyond that? Yes, certainly. So what I mean by that is when we have come into this, um, you know, when, when we have come into this life, when we were born, um, our subconscious is wide open, is wide open. Up until the age of seven, our subconscious mind is, is wide open. And what happens is, is that we are kind of pre-programmed. So we've been pre-programmed genetically. That's why we've inherited lots of traits and ideas and beliefs and that's why we look like our relatives mm -hmm. but more importantly as well we've been conditioned uh, environmentally so the way that we've been brought up the people that we've hung out with our schooling our our parents our anybody that was influential in our lives has somewhat helped us form those belief systems helped us form those ideas of what we think is possible or not possible so from the age of seven plus really we are already kind of pre-programmed of what we think that we're able to do and is this true for 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 everybody to a certain extent definitely definitely i mean I, i'm talking sort of you know this, this is based on science if, if you follow the greats dr joe Dispenza. Mm -hmm. uh, you know anybody out there you know that that is really influential in in the world of science and theology they all and psych you know um, psychology they will all agree that you know we do have this conditioning you know the subconscious mind controls the show 96 percent of the time so a lot of the things that we're doing graham we're doing automatically and then what happens is is that when we have an idea and we try to move away from that conditioning, it's not going to be in harmony with where we're programmed. So it's going to, it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unnatural. It's, it's, it's not going to feel uh, normal, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I can completely relate to that. And um, there, there is certainly out in the world a certain group of people who are just automatic with their with their reactions or responses. I always think it's a mistake to think that people are thinking <laughs> or, or a mistake to think that they're thinking in the same way that, uh, that, that we are, because uh, everybody's got their own unique history with their challenges and uh, different perspectives there. What's your take on the dichotomy of love and fear in terms of motivation do you do you see that plays a part somewhere in, in people's progress what they're uh what they're driven by definitely those are probably two of the most strongest emotions that as human beings that we feel and i suppose we are going to either going to be driven by love or we're going to be driven by fear or a combination of both and the fear part is where I suppose that I kind of resonate with, because when I look back at certain points of my life, I always wanted to excel. I always wanted to do better. And I knew unconsciously that I was capable, but there was something that was kind of holding me back. And when I now sort of understand it is a fear, it could be a fear of failing. So many of us, we don't want to fail and we view failure as this kind of um it's an overarching right. negative in, yes. in 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 the mind and and yet we can learn from yes it. definitely and, and i think that is something without a doubt that i have recognized and learning to reprogram or to think differently 
in choosing to look at fear now as and failure as as a growing experience where it, it, it's almost like in order to get past where we are, we're going to have to go through an element of failing our way to success. And, and whatever that success looks like, Graham, because it's all different for different people. It could be something in your business. It could be something in your personal life. It could be in relationships. It could be in your bank account. Whatever that failure is, it's about the growth. It's about, you know, we, we, we strive towards goals not to get things but to grow yeah. so it's about the growth from that and, and are we really going to grow if we're not willing to fail and we're not willing to try that's what holds most people back is that if what happens if i fail what happens if it doesn't work out but the polarity in that because everything has an opposite well what if i do this and i do succeed what if it brings me everything that i want how will i ever know how will I ever know if I don't try? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think you don't, you don't lose if you learn no. in, in, in the process. And, and as you pointed out, growing is fundamental. It's a fundamental process in life. I remember years ago, somebody said to me, one of my students actually said to me, there's no point getting older if you're not going to be wiser. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> yep, that, that, is, yeah. that, is, that, is, that, is, that is so true. Uh, yeah. even, even, probably even more true today <laughs> than, uh, that, than, it was, than it was then. So, so mm -hmm. we brought up the idea of failure. And so... If we if, if we turn that on it on its on its head, how do we define success in terms of personal development, or how do you see that fitting into everything? One of the greatest sharings um, of what success is, because I, again, looking back, I think I kind of define success as somebody that made it, somebody that had reached a kind of pinnacle point and that was it you you are now successful congratulations mm -hmm. <laughs> but the truth is it's a journey it's a progressive and earl nightingale probably gave one of the greatest definitions of success success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal so success is always progressive. And if you and I, Graham, and everybody that's listening here today, if they're working towards their ideal, what their goal is, then they're already successful. They're already on that path to achieving success because they have recognized what their worthy ideal is. They are not just following the masses or reacting to situations and allowing the circumstances and the events of life just happen to them they are somewhat taking control and they are working towards what it is worthy of them so it's about being more proactive than passive in a sense i would probably say so it is you know a lot of people talk about say for example the law of attraction mm -hmm. And, you know, there has been maybe a misconception that, you know, that we just sit at home and we really concentrate and we think about things and things are going to manifest. But it's about taking that action. It's about the law of attraction in action. It's about taking inspired action. Because nothing happens without that reaction, that action reaction. Mm. So, yeah, definitely. It's about taking action. I think there's a Bob Proctor quote that's something similar to where a response is more thoughtful than a reaction, mm -hmm. where, where don't just react instantly to things that are going on, but be mindful about where it is that you, that you want to go and how it is that you want to get there and to, to, to have some logical flow in in the steps involved. I imagine that transformation must be difficult for people who are busy 
And as far as I know the world, there's a lot of people <laughs> doing a lot of things, uh, very busy with everything. So how do we work on transformation in, in our lives when we're so busy? I think going back to the first point is recognizing where you are firstly and asking yourself good questions. Am I busy? Am I being busy or am I being productive? Am I efficient? Am I effective? There's a difference between being busy. We can all be busy and doing things which are not going to take us where we want to go. So again, it's recognizing where we are and then it's thinking about, right, well, what are the, as you said, Graham, it's about taking a step back and kind of reevaluating where we are firstly. Yes, we are busy, but are, are the things and are the, is the way that we're thinking, is it moving me towards the direction of where I want to be? Because if it isn't, it's, it's almost like being driving on a motorway and driving on the wrong direction and we see all the signposts and we ignore them and we carry on. Well, I guess majority of people wouldn't do that, right? We would stop and think, right, okay, well, ha, you know, I meant to be going to Edinburgh, but I'm, I'm, I'm driving up to John O'Groats. You know, I, I need to stop. Yeah. I need to kind of reevaluate. I need to turn around and change direction. So again, it's about looking at are the things, are the actions, are the, is the way that I'm thinking is that taking me to where I want to go? And if it isn't, then I would suggest to kind of stop where you are mm -hmm. and to kind of reevaluate where, which direction are you moving towards? Yeah, that's a great analogy with the signs because so many times in my life I've thought, yeah, I didn't read the sign back there, <laughs> which was <laughs> telling me to turn or telling me to go the other way. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's, you know, and I think when you reflect and look back, it it's sometimes a little bit easier to see those little red flags <laughs> waving that maybe maybe that direction wasn't quite the right way to be going uh, at at that point in time. So, yeah, I was going to say, and I think you know, I think what we tend to do is that we don't trust ourselves, we don't trust our intuition. And, you know, we have these higher faculties of, of where we've been blessed. We have the will, we have our imagination, we have memory, we have perception, we have, you know, intuition. All these, yeah, we have all these sort of innate universal abilities that we've been born with. And mm -hmm. we, you know, I, I once saw a list of all the important personal characteristics for human beings that are not taught or measured in school. And it was huge. <laughs> it was huge. There was like 40, 50, 60 things in, in, in the list. And we can, when we know what they are, we can draw on those and use yeah. those in, in our lives as, as well. And the, the element of trust that you brought up is very important to me personally. Um, you know, how do I, how do I learn to trust myself? Where do I begin in a process like that? I think that we all have this feeling of inside of us when something doesn't feel good. So what is, what is feeling? Well, we, we have used the word feeling to really describe what vibration we're in. So when we don't feel good, it's really our intuition talking to us to say, hey, Graham, you're on the right, you know, you're on the wrong road. You know, you're, you're ignoring these signposts. You're not aligned. You need to be in alignment with who you are and, and what you want. And so it's having that trust within yourself and, and listening to that intuitive voice inside. And we tend to ignore that because we're so busy concentrating or asking other people, well, what do you think? What do you think I should do? And we end up asking people that it's not their goal. It's not their wishes and dreams and hopes. It's yours. So nobody knows you better than yourself. 
it's learning to trust that intuition it's learning to trust that inner guidance system inside that we have in... and i imagine sorry sorry to jump in i imagine some people have lost that yeah yeah i think because i, I totally agree because we're so busy taking in you know everything of what we hear you know what we see hear smell taste and touch those highways which we're taking up in all this information and and we lose sight of what it is we want we lose sight of what what it feels like inside what you know what our true being wants mm. and and we take other people's opinions of what we you know what they think we should do and we kind of ignore ourselves in that really so it, it's about you know again one of the next steps really is is to be open and honest with yourself you know what is it i want how do i want to feel oh absolutely yeah, there are times in life when it's not selfish to look after yourself <laughs> yeah it's, it's no actually, absolutely it's actually yeah, quite I, I totally agree i totally agree graham you know we again it could be a belief system that we've had is that you know um to think about yourself or to think about what you want in life is a selfish thing but the most probably most the most inspiring thing that you can give others your children your your family is is to pursue what you want in your life because if you're doing something for yourself that makes you happy and it makes your life worthy and it makes everything worthwhile and then you are going to be happy with other people because you're happy with yourself i'll just take a few seconds to take that in because that is very profound and uh definitely something that relates to my experience in life um you made me think there that inspiration is the pursuit of a dream or mm -hmm. understanding the pursuit of a dream and when we see other people pursue it we can we can be inspired really Definitely. by that by, by that by that whole process wow talking about strategies because i think strategy is important in, in personal development you don't need to plan everything but i think that that some level of thought about what next uh, matters so uh, you know how crucial is that for, from your perspective and maybe how do you employ sort of strategies such as time management and organization within the work that, that you do i have an interesting take on this i suppose graham i okay. believe it's 95 percent mindset and five percent strategy i believe that you could probably have all the strategies um in the world and it doesn't mean that you're going to take the action because if you don't have the right psychology in the first place if you don't have that right mindset are you going to actually take action in those strategies if your self-image and i'm talking about the self-image of what dr maxwell maltz talks about in psychocybernetics of where it's our concept of ourselves if we don't have the the right concept of ourselves in what we want to achieve then we can take all the actions and again it, we, we're going to be we're going to be held back by that idea that's fixed in the mind of, of where we think we are or what we're capable of doing so yes i believe in organized planning think and grow rich has a chapter in in talking about organized planning so you're right it is about having a plan it is about having a strategy it is about taking action and at times it's taken that imperfect action when i look back in on my hr career i always have thought i needed a plan and the plan had to be perfect and i had to work this perfect plan and you know i no, i can't do anything no nope, i'm not going to take any action because this plan isn't perfect mm -hmm. and that is a, a limiting belief that i had because that just forces us to kind of procrastinate and we don't end up taking any action so it is about like you said having a plan the goal never changes the plan in which that happens often does so it's about being flexible towards that 
and sometimes we go down one path and in and we think it's gonna this we think this is gonna be the way and then you know something happens and we end up going down a different path than the plan so again you asked the question about sort of time management well i believe you know we can't manage time graham what we can do we all have the same 24 hours in the day you know you and i a top ceo of a business somebody that is living out on living on a park bench we all have those same 24 hours it's about what it is we're doing with those 24 hours it's about those activities that we're we're, we're taking in those 24 hours that's oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, 86,400 seconds, I believe. <laughs> right, okay. I'll take your word on it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. It's just my micromanagement of everything. <laughs> so so, so in, in terms of the fact that we all, and that's a great point, you know, we all have 24 hours. Nobody's got 25, 23. Mm -hmm. So what is it that works for you in terms of organizing your 24 hours because like we all need we, we all need support we all need help we all need role models we all need people we look up to we all need um it, it, advice from those who have more experience than ourselves mm -hmm. so so how does that how does that work for you in organization i think for me I've learned to be more flexible. I've, I've decided, I've made that conscious choice to be more flexible uh, in my approach. I have also have a family of which you know, I, I look after, so I build that time in as well. And so for me, it's about what do I, when I wake up in the morning, a couple of things that I continuously sort of focus on, one of which is gratitude. If you ever wake up in the morning or before you go to bed or any time of the day that you're feeling a bit off, you, you feel that, you know, am I being as effective as, 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 as I should be? Uh, am I feeling good? Then gratitude is a great way of shifting that great way. So one of the first things I do, I think about or I write out, you know, between five and 10 things of what I'm grateful for. And that could be as simple as, as, you know, the fact that I have running water coming through my tap screen, I'm able to yeah. go into my kitchen, I'm able to go in the bathroom and clean my teeth with clean running water. You probably could find 10 things about water, you know, yeah. in itself yeah. about, you know, feelings. So gratitude is a great way of starting your day. And then I go on to study. Now study can take, you know, so many different forms, especially nowadays with, with technology. That could be listening to a podcast just as we yeah, as we're filming and, and now it could be listening to an inspirational leader it could be studying on the material which i you know i take my clients through because i study alongside them um so you know that those are the first couple of things that i do and then normally the night before or you know beginning of the week i have planned out the things, my non-negotiables, which I need to get done during that week or during that month. And then I allow, I allow some time sort of in between to really, again, to follow my intuition. What is it I feel that I need from today? And sometimes it could be uh, a thought that pops up in my mind to contact a certain person that I've been thinking about. And I'll reach out to that person and have a conversation and perhaps share some ideas or share some thoughts. And so I, I you know, a lot of it now is, is, is quite intuitive to be honest with you. Um, and again, the certain points during the day or during the working week that I come together with like-minded people, it could be within the Proctor Gallagher uh, Institute that we have a mastermind session. Again, one of the principles based in Think and Grow Rich you know, we don't have to try and figure things out. We can't do everything on ourselves, Graham. We do need to have, um, you know, a support system around us, which helps us. So the mastermind principle is really, really key in like-minded people coming together. And it, it's like a hooking up a load of batteries and, and getting that kind of power of, of many. So that, that is another thing which I do quite um, often. 
Wow. I like the idea of the fact that you go through the same materials that your clients go through, because I think a good master is always learning from their students as well. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's very important to understand the process that the clients are, are going through. And there, there's so much we can always learn anyway. It's, it's, a never, it's a never ending process. And, and that is one of the things that I sort of share with my clients. It's all about the repetition. You mentioned sort of earlier how important it is sometimes to go back looking at sort of material or books or inspirational people that, you know, have made a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's all about that repetition because the content, may, it, it never changes, but the person that you are, the person where you are now changes. And so now, for example, like this week, we're focusing on um, leaving everybody with the impression of increase. Now that was taken from Wallace D. Wattles' book, The Science of Getting Rich. It's about leaving everybody you meet, everybody you meet, better off than what you originally found them. And so I've been studying that alongside everybody else this week, and it's been phenomenal for me because the person I was when I first looked at it, you know, three years ago, is not the same person that I am today. Absolutely. If we could all employ the habit of leaving everyone we interact with better off, then there's nothing but growth and productivity and, and increase for, uh, for everyone everywhere. And it sounds so simple, doesn't it? It, just, it sounds so it simple. It is. <laughs> it is. It is uh, that simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the solutions are we tend to you know search in other dimensions and universes for the answers that we have right at home. Yeah, wow, uh, that that is so true. What are non-negotiables for you in in your life in terms of your work and uh, happiness and personal development? non-negotiable for me i suppose is that i need to show up mm -hmm. whatever i'm doing in my life be it in my family life be it in my professional life in my business that i need to show up mm -hmm. so there are times i suppose that we all feel that i don't really feel like maybe i want to do that live today on facebook i feel that perhaps i you know i don't feel in the right vibe to speak to that person <laughs> But um, that, that is a non-negotiable, that I show up. Whatever I'm doing, um, for me, it's about showing up. Yeah, I'm, again, just taking a second to, to pause and think about that element because it is, it is so important. And in our little sort of preamble conversation, I said I was so happy that you were here five minutes early for our conversation online because that, that, that means a lot to me. And, um, in my life, there have been so many circumstances of people not showing up, mm. people not keeping their, their word as their bond, as their promise. Mm. And, you know, that, that's the beginning of a trusting relationship, yeah. is knowing that you can lean on other people to do what it is that they say that they're going to do. Yeah. And uh, as a consultant in your position, you obviously have to lead by example and definitely definitely you know and as you said earlier Graham, leadership has taken on a whole new understanding for me now a whole new understanding in order to lead others we have to be able to lead ourselves that is mm -hmm. fundamentally we're both a leader and a follower and sometimes in order to become a good leader we have to be uh, a real good you know we have to be a, a great follower and there are times of where we're switching roles between being a follower and a leader so um yeah I, I, for me um say what you mean and mean what you say again one of those principles that we're taught when we're when we're growing up yep yep and um, we need to be reminded of it every mm -hmm. every now and then because there are so many distractions and other things happening uh, in life you you mentioned earlier the importance of taking action and being in the moment and there was a thought that i had um last week about uh 
sickness and illness that, that when you're ill or when you're sick, you have to be, it sort of pulls you right into, into now as sort of a, a pointer of what you need to take care of or, or, or look after or get on with and things. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share that because it was just, just popped yeah. into my, popped into my head there. Yeah. So in your work with clients, you have to put in, as with everybody in business, you have to put in a lot of energy. You know, you only, you only get out what you put in, right? You put in a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of work in, into making things work for other people and into helping them. So where do you get your energy and your inspiration from? That's a great question. There's so many people that I have, that I admire and kind of inspire me. Um, it, it naturally, you know, working alongside Bob Proctor, you know, every, every day I'm inspired by the work that we do within the Proctor Gallagher Institute, you know, the, the same with my fellow PGI consultants. So they definitely inspire me. But there's so many other people, uh, you know, Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, Earl Nightingale, who Bob worked alongside, that they really brought personal development out to people like you and I. Um, Neville Goddard. I mean, wow, what a great inspirational um, person. Again, you know, you don't have to have people that are alive nowadays to kind of inspire you. So Neville Goddard, um, Esther Hicks. Um, definitely is a, is a great inspiration to me as well. And also, I think my clients inspire me as well, Graham. When I look at what they are achieving and how they first started, where they were first thinking, to what they have become and who they are becoming, they inspire me. We, we come together every, every week and I come off that call feeling so inspired, feeling so motivated, feeling totally energized by what they give back. So it's, again, it's that kind of action reaction. Um, it's phenomenal. So, so many people and, and so many people that I come across, you know, speaking with you, Graham, you inspire me, you know, you inspired me when we had that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, again, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be this you know massive leader that's out there you know you can find the smallest uh, of of things that people share with you mm. that you really you 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 internalize and you reflect on can really you know inspire you to to move forward oh absolutely if you take the time to appreciate what is actually happening around about you you know you can be you can be inspired by a flower in the forest if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, or like the sunrise that I saw this morning, um, mm -hmm. which invoked in me gratitude naturally yeah. mm -hmm. of just like, wow, the sun, another day, another opportunity. So cool. Yeah. And, and so something you just mentioned um, really resonated with me, which was that you can get inspiration from people who are, not alive now and that through the benefit of technology and recorded history and audio and video and the wonderful internet um we we can now access the the inspiration of so many people from from so many places there's almost no excuse to not to not be <laughs> yeah. to, to not to not be inspired uh, when we look at uh the world around about us what was it i, I want to take a step back because this is on my mind and i'm going to forget if i don't ask you now when you took the move from human resources into the consultancy and, and personal development what was it like for you at the beginning reaching out and communicating with clients and getting across the these 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 ideas for for human growth and potential um what was it like for you doing that did you did you suffer any resistance or what was the process when i look back um it was such a a, a great time of growth for me personally because again 
we have these kind of preconceived ideas about what we are capable or who we are. And, and you know, I, I remember, you know, reaching out to people, certainly within my circles and certainly within my network and sharing some ideas initially. And, and as you said, Graham, you know, there was some resistance and, and the people that you think, I can't wait to speak to so-and-so about this, they're going to totally get this and this is going to transform their lives. And, and sometimes it was like, no, I don't get it. Or actually, no, I, I, I can't see it. So um, there is an element of when somebody, when a student is ready, then the teacher will appear. And, and what I find now is, is I just have conversations with people, Graham. I just have conversations with people to see where they're at, where they want to go, and what they think is holding them back. And I think once you kind of establish that, and once you really build up that trust and that confidence in, in showing people that actually they are where they are because of their thinking, and by shifting that, that is when that is when everything kind of this jigsaw kind of starts to fit together. So yes, there was some resistance, but at the same time, there was also this whole new world that was open to me, whole new world of meeting people that I probably never would have come across before. And, uh, and, and for that, I am, you know, I, I'm truly really blessed and grateful for. So, yeah. That's such a powerful question. What is holding you back? Just, um, just if I run that through my own mind right now, like what is holding you back? It really does force, not force, enc it encourages you to reflect mm -hmm. in, in an open and honest way. Are there any questions that you use with clients that that resonate with them more than anything else? Because I find in my own personal development work, there are, there, are, there are some questions that for some reason seem to open more doors for people than others. Are there, are there any that are like that for you? I always kind of start the conversation, I suppose, is what is it you want? Mm. Not what is it you, not what you think you can have, most people sort of settle for what they think that they can have. What is it you truly want? If, if you had all the resources, if you had all the time, if you had all the money that there ever was, what is it you'd want to achieve? If, if there was no way of failing, what is, wow. what is it you want to achieve? Wow. If you knew that you couldn't fail, what would you yeah. do? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What a what an amazingly powerful question. To begin to invoke the reality of a limitless potential in the mind mm -hmm. of a person. Wow. Yeah. Wow. As you can tell, I will be using this session for my own therapy <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Wow. Graham, honestly, you're more than welcome. My, wow. my, you know, if, if I can, if I can leave you, you feeling better off than what I originally found you, then, you know, I've done a good thing. And then my work is, you know, my work has been achieved. So, um, but it, it, it is, it is such a powerful question because we do place limits on ourselves. The only limitations are the ones that we impose upon ourselves. And I think if we really understood as human beings of what we are truly capable of mm. in our personal lives, in our professional lives, you only have to look at the people that have really achieved things that have never been done before, never been done. You know, Roger Bannister was told it was physically impossible to run a mile under four minutes, but he... Mm -hmm. He quit believing what everybody else was telling him. He started to believe what he wanted to achieve. And as always, Graham, as soon as somebody achieves that goal or that point in their lives of where nobody has ever done anything like that, it opens up the floodgates that thousands of people achieve. Yeah. So if, 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 if Roger hadn't believed 
in him yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. you know what that makes me think of and this is like a weird tangent but my brain works that way it makes me think of internet connections because when i returned to this country after being out in europe for 20 plus years i was trying to get the same internet speed here as i got in the mountains of slovakia and i was <laughs> i was told by the telecom company that the speed i wanted was impossible i was told that it was impossible that it doesn't exist and i was like well no i've just been living in the mountains for a couple of years and i actually had that <laughs> and just just that you know just to relate to what you said just that idea of because they believe it's not possible they they actually are not going to explore the fact that it actually is possible absolutely you know our belief creates the fact and 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 this is i suppose going back to what you were asking me earlier about you know what is holding us back it's our belief systems graham that's what it comes down to it's our belief systems of, of what we think what we think we are capable of achieving mm. if we believe we can do something as long as it's within the realms of of you know of of the laws you know we know that if if we stood on our roof and we jumped off we know that we're not going to fly we we know that we don't have to see gravity to to understand it we know that's going to happen so our belief systems really create our reality i'm just taking another second here to absorb the information because it's so powerful belief creates the fact wow mm -hmm. but that is uh that's amazing. Um, and I hope people out there listening are taking this in as, as well. And um, if you didn't get that, rewind, <laughs> and go back and listen again. Because <laughs> it, it's, it's worth it absorbing all of this information com completely. So within your work, what is it that brings you joy? What do you enjoy most from the things that you do? There's so many. Um, ah, wow, that's such a great question. What really brings me joy is connecting with people, Graham. I love, I love talking to people. I love people. And again, what, what this time has allowed um, in terms of Zoom and connecting people by the internet, you know, it, it's opened up the doors to meet with people that potentially you wouldn't physically have met. So connecting with people, speaking with like-minded people brings me joy. Um, what really brings me joy is watching someone and experiencing, because I believe that I'm on the same journey as my clients, experiencing that journey with them. That really brings me joy. Um, the, the trials, the tribulations, the, 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 the curveballs, the, the things that really go well, the things that don't go well, the, the whole sh kind of shebang, should we say, you know, that the whole kind of journey, that really brings me joy. Um, I just absolutely love what I do in ev with every cell of, of, of my body. Um, do you find your purpose or does your purpose find you? Uh, I believe that, you know, um, that it's probably a purpose of mine to be able to go out and to reach people and to share my ideas and to help people and to give them accountability and to help them create what they want to create. That I believe is my purpose. That's what I believe that I'm here to do. And for me, the more that I understand me, so the more that I study me and I understand me, the, the more I'm able then to help other people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. The more that we understand about ourselves, the more that we can see how we relate to other people and understand yeah. them as well, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not everything about our work is always flowing and going according to plan. So what about the, the hard parts? What about 
the struggles? Are there some things that, uh, that, that are difficult for you about it? I would say, again, it's, it's, a, it's a question of perception. Is something difficult or is something easy? I just believe it just is. It's the meaning. We give the meaning to something. We, we make it what it is. We make it difficult. We make it easy. So it's, it's our, again, it's our perception, our higher faculty of our perception of, of viewing it what it is. So um, I, don't be, I just believe that everything should be the way it is. And again, it's about our growth in that experience of making it what it is. So yes, there are times, I suppose, just like everybody else, that you know, I get frustrated or I get you know, uh, a feeling of, is this working? Mm -hmm. But again, it's been able to, everything has good or bad. Everything has that, that polarity. There's a hot, there's a cold. There's no insight with a, without an outside. There's no good without a bad. So, you know, that that is one of the laws of the universe, polarity. So I know that for every adversity, it's an opportunity of growth and opportunity. So that, that is how I view it, Graham. I just look, if, if something isn't going my way, I think to myself, right, I have a choice. Am I going to focus on what I don't want? Or am I going to focus on what I do want? And by focusing on what I do want, is going to bring what I do want as opposed to focusing on what I don't want is only going to bring exactly the same things of what I don't want. So there's a difference between acknowledging something and focusing on something. So I always focus on what I do want. I always focus on, on writing out my goal. I always focus on my goal card. I always focus on the, the daily action steps, which I'm taking because like attracts like again, that action reaction. Yeah, fantastic point. Yeah, what if what if it's not difficult? What if it just is? Yeah, is it is once again so powerful. And I, I've seen that in the world around me, where I've looked at something and thought, "Oh my God, this is a huge problem," and I've seen somebody else like that solve it, and <laughs> which is you know, caused me to reevaluate my perspective on, well, I guess it's how I see it. I guess it's my choice mm -hmm. to see it, to see it as, as difficult because mm -hmm. you can choose to learn about it. You can choose to study it. You can choose to ask people for help with it yeah. uh, as well. And the world is so complicated that nobody knows everything so uh just you know reaching out and asking for help now and then is uh is is what people need to do which is what they can do with a, a coach and a consultant is when they're not sure to get the focus to get the clarity to get the direction is you know just reach out basically uh wish more people would do that <laughs> <laughs> well i guess you know it, it, it's if we were learning to drive we could try and figure it out ourselves, but how far would we get? Probably not very far. <laughs> we would go to somebody that can help us. So this isn't any different. If we want to achieve something that we have never done before, then go to somebody that has either done it or that can help you on that journey in achieving it. Mm. Because as we said before, Graham, we can't achieve everything by ourselves. You know, we are human beings that you know where we share experiences you know we work together to achieve the greater good or whatever it is in our lives so yeah go to somebody that can help you yeah. because the best investment will always be in yourself i long for the day when the personal development consultancy will be alongside the electrician and the plumber you know as <laughs> As, as, as one of those essential elements where we understand that we can actually reach out to people and, uh, and they will help us. Mm -hmm. If we begin to look forward, what is your vision for your work and what you would like to do and what you would like to achieve? I think for me, you know, my vision 
I'm actually looking at, you know, I've got sort of a, a diagram on my wall and I'm looking at my sort of vision, value and sort of strategic priorities. You know, for me, I aspire to be, you know, the number one personal and professional development coaching partner in the UK. I want to deliver organized change management, you know, to be able to lead with culture. I want to be able to instill permanent leadership and culture, change in leaders, to kind of make that rational and emotional sort of change together. I want to be able to coach and mentor individuals, entrepreneurs, business owners into act, act your way into thinking. You know, those are the things that I want to achieve. You know, I, I want to... I want everybody to know about who I am and will to win, not because of me, but because of what this material can do for you in your life. Because no matter what the goal is, it doesn't matter whether or not you want to double your income in your business, of which I have done in, in, in what other people will kind of, again, that choice they'll perceive to be challenging times to actually your goal to wake up in the morning for you to feel worthy it doesn't matter what the goal is the process is exactly the same we can't change the outside world until we start changing the inside world so for me you know to to be known as one of the great sort of leaders in personal um, personal and professional development is, is is certainly a goal and um is, is my worthy ideal i would say definitely Wow. What does it take to become number one, do you think? I think it takes all sorts of qualities and things in your life. And I probably would say one of the major things is persistence. Mm. Persistence. Not there is giving up. <laughs> not giving up that's the only way that we're ever going to fail is if we give up it is about persistence i remember that there was um, a, a time recently of whereby i studied we read me uh, myself and my clients we read the persistence chapter in think and grow rich for 30 days every day we read the persistence chapter you know there is no heroic connotation to the word persistence but the qualities are um, what carbon is to steel is one of the phrases. So, you know, persistence, it is about no matter what life throws at you, you have to be persistent in, in, persistent in, in what you want to achieve. Definitely. Absolutely. There's also, because because my background is in language, I'm always interested in the structure of words and, uh, and etymology and any word that uses stance in it. I find very interesting, as in to stand or position yourself mm -hmm. in the right place. You've got persistence, mm -hmm. circumstance. Yes, circumstance. Yeah, all, all very interesting. And um, here's a slogan for you. You you will win if you don't give in. There you go. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you use it. Feel free. Take it. Take it. Take it. It's, I do. Everything, everything is here to be shared, yeah. right? Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> you will win if you yeah. give in. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, <laughs> I should have been a songwriter in a different you life. You should have been. <laughs> well, hey, Graham, there's still time. There's still right? time. Yes. There is time. <laughs> Write it today That's on your it. goal card. That's it. There's still time. There is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm not even... I'm not even halfway there yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Everything I've done, I can, I, I, I can do it all and more. There we go. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Limit, limitless potentials. Limitless potentials. Um, yeah. Right. Talking about limitlessness, if that's a word. Um, mm -hmm. If you could wave a magic wand and change one thing about your work or your industry or even the world around about you, you had that magical power. What, what's the one thing that, that you would try to influence and change? To a certain degree, I'm not sure if I would change anything. 
I think people have to have their own kind of realization and or awakening or however we want to to call it um as i sort of said earlier i believe you know there is a time when the student is ready that the teacher will appear and and however that teacher whatever they specialize in i i don't i don't honestly think that maybe i would change anything you know maybe i you know for people to to stop kind of concentrating on their current circumstances and just to be able to stop and kind of reflect and to think about what they want maybe that is the one th great thing that comes out of this podcast is that somebody goes away and actually thinks about and stops and thinks to themselves am i going in the direction of what i truly want Am I really being as effective as possible? Am I living out my life for me? So if that is the one thing that I'm able to wave my will to win magic wand today. <laughs> well, oh, there's another yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, the will, the, the will to win wand. Well, yes, I like it. <laughs> I'm going to get it made. I'm yes. going to get it made. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> Write it down. Oh, definitely. The will to win ones. No, you, you're... <laughs> no, this is great. Honestly, this is, this is fantastic. I would probably say that that is the one thing, Graham. The one thing, you know, from, from today. Just really stop and think about, are you living your life the way that you want are you are you fulfilling everything that you want because if you're not you know we're only here for a short time we're only here for a short time so make it count whatever it is make it count that's a great question that i probably need to ask myself on a daily basis that's one of the the, the fundamentals right right there if you could guide people towards a piece of media that you think that if they consume it, maybe there will be some some improvement in their their life. You know, is there a book maybe that you think people should read or something like that? Could you put out a suggestion? Yeah, definitely. Um, without a doubt, it's it's going to have to be the great classic Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. That book really transformed, if you think about it, Napoleon Hill, he dedicated his life to putting together the messages of success and, and putting it together in an organized manner of which Andrew Carnegie had asked him to. You know, if you think about he dedicated his life, then wouldn't it be a great idea to dedicate our lives in, you know, in, in reading it and applying it? Because it's more relevant today than than ever especially in these changing times so definitely think and grow rich the other influential book that i absolutely love that again that i study is definitely psycho cybernetics by dr maxwell maltz maltz he was the one that created the whole self image concept he was a cosmetic surgeon and he asked the questions, I suppose, of why is it that he was making physical changes on people? I don't know, it could be fixing a scar. And sometimes there was no psychological change whatsoever. That person still acted and believed that, you know, they acted in accordance to having that scar. So um, that, again, started his journey, I guess, in, in terms of understanding the, the whole, how we perceive ourselves inside because we have this GPS system. We have this built-in GPS system inside ourselves that we are built for success, but you know, that there are times of where we don't follow our intuition or we don't follow that inner guidance and, and we self-sabotage ourselves. That's what predominantly that as human beings, that's what we do. So understanding the, the whole concept of self-image, but really as well, Graham, changing it. And that is what I help people to, to do. 
And, and that isn't somewhat kind of faking it until you make it. It's about pulling out all the, the attributes of other people that inspire you and, and, and qualities that they have and thinking about if I, if I implemented those, what changes would it make in my life? Would it, what changes would it make? What difference would it make to me? So definitely psychocybernetics. And I think one thing that I really love, obviously, you know, everything within the Proctor Gallagher Institute, definitely. But I just love the, the whole concept of YouTube because it's a bit of a, a rabbit hole because you watch one thing and then it takes you down and then another suggestion comes up. And that's how I discovered Esther Hicks. That's why, that's how I discovered um, Joe Dispenza and you know all the other because I, I love the whole scientific approach as well so yeah it, it's there's so much out there now so so much out there um that we can kind of absorb our minds in and again you know watching something because we think in pictures so youtube is a, is a great visual demonstration of of how uh, of what we're thinking so those are the th kind of the three things that i would sort of recommend Wow, wow. That uh, thinking, grow rich, psycho cybernetics, and to ex explore the world through YouTube and see what, uh, see what, see what you can find. Yeah, you're, you're actually the second person to recommend psycho cybernetics, actually, as, as, as a book. And that's something that I haven't personally read. I know a little bit about the topic. But, um, you know, when things appear more than once it's sort of the signal that you know <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. really ought to go in that direction and, yeah and, and and read that so um um yeah. note, note to self there mm -hmm. note to self wow I, I would like to take this opportunity right now to thank you very much for your time this morning I know that you're a very busy person, so I appreciate all of the information that you have shared, which I know is going to help me, and I really hope that it's going to help other people as well. If people want to get in touch with you, where can they find you? You can find me almost anywhere now, Graham. Um, I have, <laughs> which yes. again, yes, the great news is that I do have my own website, which is www.will-2-win.co.uk. I have my own Facebook page. I have, uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn as Claire Humphreys. Uh, and I'm based here in the Highlands. But the great thing about what I do is that, you know, I work uh, nationally, internationally, so we don't even have to be in the same country. And, and I do work with people internationally as well. So yes, you can pick up the phone and phone me on me on, on my telephone as well. So various different ways of, of reaching out. Um, but uh, yeah, all, 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 all across social media. Super, the, the old school and the new school way. Uh, anyway, yeah. anyway, uh, people can yeah. reach out would, would be good. Uh, mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So no excuses, people, no ex excuses. You know where to go and you know who is gonna help you right now. So once again, thank you very much for your time this morning. I wish you the greatest of success in the future and I hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you ever so much, Graham. I'm really, I am grateful to you. I've really enjoyed our time together. I think what you're doing is absolutely fantastic in raising awareness. And I'm grateful for you to reaching out. And I know that it's, you and I are going to stay in contact. I can feel that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You're very welcome. Thank you very much, everyone. And have an awesome day and uh, work towards your worthy ideal. Thank you. Made in Murray is a product of the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching. Book a free online personal or professional development consultation today. What are you waiting for?